Mary C. Curtis. I at Hi, one Mary. point worked at the New York Times. I'm Washington Post sheet of people uh, columnist now. Um, earlier you were talking about being very proud and rightly so for diversifying the masthead. Um, but it's also been noted that that didn't translate as much in terms of women of color, and particularly African American women. Uh, there are few black women in the leadership pipeline at the Times. And uh, this came to light recently when the TV critic, Alexander Stanley, who's been there for a while, wrote a column on Shonda Rhimes that the New York Times <coughs> public editor called astonishingly tone deaf. And it was brought out that of the 20 or so critics, uh, the Times has only two of color and no black critics. And the culture editor herself said it revealed the department's blind spots, which kind of translated into saying that you can uh, ascend into that kind of position while having those particular blind spots. So I just want to touch base and, and have you a and ask you what were your goals in this area when you were the editor uh, and how do you think you did? Thanks. Well, um, diversity was very important to me and given how things worked out, uh, well, I'll leave that unsaid, but obviously my first choice was to make Dean Baquet, who is black, my managing editor. Uh, yes, he is male, clearly, but that was important to me, that the very top leadership of, of the Times uh, have a person of color. Uh, and I guess I, I would also like to push back a little bit on the Alexander Stanley thing just for a minute. I know, obviously, I'm well aware that what she wrote, the phrase angry black woman in an otherwise quite positive piece about Chandra Rhimes and the TV show she's created, that, you know, Alessandra has been, you know, a female critic for a long time, and all of the critics, but especially the women critics at the Times, face a hail of bullets constantly. And, okay, one review she wrote might have a regrettable or tone deaf phrase in it, but you try doing that job. It is tough to be a culture critic for the New York Times, and it's tough to be a woman in that job. And whether it's uh, Michiko Kakutani or Alessandra or, um, you know, the female movie critic or, you know, it, it, it is a, a very tough environment and they write many times a week and they have to be out there saying thumbs up or thumbs down and over time I think Alessandra Stanley has been one of the most engaging critics in journalism today. So just wanted to say that. Uh, promoting women of color has always been important to me. Uh, but promotion also has a retention challenge with it because I brought in some fantastic uh, women of color to the Times. One of them is Lynette Clementson, who's still a great friend of mine, but she left the Times to go start the root. I mean, it's, a, it's the, the competition for the, the talent is keen. And uh, so all I can say is I tried very hard, uh, and now it's up to other people to make the change.